Hey guys, this is Paish from Vio.com and this is the new iQ Z3 5G. And this is a phone that seems to hold up pretty well against the competition if you just look at the specs. And that's the reason it's been getting a lot of hype. Now that's also the reason why we thought let's not do a simple first impressions video. Let's do a proper review. So I used it as my daily driver, tested it out and turns out the iQ Z3 is a phone full of compromises. Yes, this is my iQ Z3 5G review. So let me just get it out straight away. The biggest reason everyone's talking about the iQ Z3 is because it brings the latest Snapdragon 768G SoC at Rs 19,990. Now I think you already know the specs and it's not just numbers. The performance is one area where the iQ Z3 truly shines. To be clear, it's not a Snapdragon 860 beta. The Poco X3 Pro remains the most powerful phone in the segment, but it does go ahead of every other phone in benchmarks. Here's the attitude score of the Snapdragon 768G on the iQ Z3 versus the 750G on the Mi 10i versus the Dimensity 800 on the Realme X7. And as you can see, the 768G scores a lot higher actually. Now for people who don't know, the 768G is basically an overclocked 765G. It has both a higher clock CPU as well as a higher clock GPU. Now there are also a few minor differences in the standards like Bluetooth, but it's basically the same chipset, which is not a bad thing. I mean, the iQ Z3's performance is excellent. I've been using the 6 plus 128 GB base variant of the phone and this thing is pretty good. Apps launch up quickly, there's no weird lag and the gaming performance is consistent without any hiccups like thermal throttling or any overheating issues. So the iQ Z3 does live up to the promise of great performance in this price, but it still doesn't quite feel like a phone I'd personally buy at 20K. See, the iQ Z3 does a few things pretty well. For example, the 4400mAh battery performs well and the charging speed is good. I mean, I got SOTs of around five, five and a half hours on an average, which I think lies in the good battery ballpark. And the 55 watt charger that the phone comes with is pretty fast. It charges the phone from zero to 60% in around half an hour. And it takes the phone from zero to 100% in around 55 minutes, which is pretty fast. So I like what's good about the iQ Z3. And what I don't like is the compromises. There are a lot of them. So first up, the design has a few compromises. I mean, the in-hand feel of the phone is good. It's not too heavy or bulky at 185 grams, and that's a good thing. But the phone does not look or feel like a premium phone that costs 20K. See, I would have been okay with the plastic frame and plastic bag if there was a good looking matte finish or something that looked more premium. Well, this does not. Now I know looks are subjective, but what's with the teardrop notch and the big chin in 2021? It just looks outdated on a phone from 2019 and I can even see some screen bleeding near the notch. Then there's also the fact that this phone does not have stereo speakers. As for the display, it's a 6.5 inch IPS LCD 120Hz panel with Panda glass protection. And yeah, that's actually the name of the protection. And this is a good screen. It's decently bright. I compared it to the Note 10 Pro Max's display and the Note's display looks slightly brighter to me, but it's not a big difference as you can see here. The iQ Z3's display is also sharp, the colors look good enough, although the viewing angles could have been better. The 120Hz refresh rate works well too, I had it set to smart switch and there were no weird stutters when switching between different pages and apps, so what's the problem? See the fact is there are phones like the Redmi Note 10 Pro Max now in this price range which bring 120Hz AMOLED at a lower price and that's kind of what makes this display not so impressive. I mean, I wish Ico would have used AMOLED here to at least cover for the other issues in this phone. But yeah, it is what it is. There's one more thing on the display front. So the display here is set to support HDR10, but I checked in Netflix and I checked in Prime Video and I did not see any HDR tag in any of the shows. So it's probably not working yet. See, I would have overlooked the dated sort of design, the lack of AMOLED panel. Well, I wouldn't have, but let's say I would have overlooked these and I would have been okay with this. But there's still one thing that I just cannot be okay with. The software experience on this phone, the FunTouch OS 11 experience. I mean, we recently made a video on the FunTouch OS 11 update and we talked about all the big issues. And well, they are all present in the iQ Z3. And you know what? I found some more. First up, the lock screen poster feature, it's enabled by default. I mean, there's not even a mention of it in the setup process to let you know it's on. Anyway, so it's basically adware, promote stories. And if I want to disable it, I'll first have to give the lock screen poster service my permission to make and manage phone calls. That's not all, I will also have to give it access to photos, media and files just to disable this feature, which by the way, I did not even agree to in the first place. Yeah, this is super weird. Now that's not all. How can I even trust this phone if it interferes with the experience in Google Apps? Chrome to be specific. 
And Chrome here by default comes with this Vivo homepage by default, which is basically a way to show these ads and recommendations. I mean, these are proper ads. Well, this is not cool. Now, there are obviously all the other issues. There's bloatware with the hot apps and hot games folders. There's the usual unnecessary notifications. And the multitasking gesture still does not work. Yep, it just does not work. There are also these pop-up privacy terms for every single app, and most of these are kind of shady. I mean, to search for apps in the app drawer, I have to accept this privacy policy, which clearly mentions it collects GID, GUID, IP address, location, and it will be stored at Vivo servers for three years, and the data may be processed by third parties. So the software on this phone is the biggest compromise. It's a big deal breaker. But if you still want to know about the camera experience, I'll give you an idea. Here are the specs, and I'll be honest, the cameras here aren't exactly a compromise. It's actually not bad, not extraordinary, but I'd say it's decent now. I mean, the iQOO Z3 captures photos that are sharp and it gets the exposure mostly right. For example, this photo is pretty good, right? But you know what? A lot of its photos have this warm sort of yellow tinge that gives them an oversaturated feel. In low light, the warm tinge isn't that visible and I think it does pretty well in low light, although it does struggle with harsh lights or a darker situation. I even compared things to the Redmi Note 10 Pro Max's cameras to get a better idea. And while the Z3 kind of does match up with its exposure, the warmish tone is visible. To make it clear, the Note 10 Pro Max isn't perfect with colors, but it's just better than the iQOO Z3. And if I just zoom in on almost any shot, say this one, you'll see more details in the Note 10 Pro Max photo. The Note 10 Pro Max is also better in low light. It handles lights better, as you can see in this shot, where I use tap to focus on both the phones. And it's not just the lights, the Redmi phone takes sharper shots as well. For example, just look at the trees in this shot. Moving on, the iQOO Z3's ultra-wide angle lens is kind of fine. I personally found it to be decent. And yeah, it's as decent as ultra-wide angle cameras go in this price range. Now, one aspect of the camera which I found pretty good is the selfies. Most selfies have sort of a balanced tone. Not too sharp, not too soft. So I like it. Video performance is kind of okay. -ish. Here's a 4K video shot from the phone and you can clearly see the oversaturation all around. It's a bit too much if you ask me. And since there's no OIS, the video is kind of jittery. See, overall, the point is that the iQOO Z3 5G is a phone that has just too many compromises. I mean, I can't recommend a phone just because it has Snapdragon 768G. Yes, granted, the Snapdragon 768G is a good performer here, but I just can't ignore the outdated design, the lack of AMOLED, and honestly, I don't want anyone to go through the fun touch OS experience here. Look, iQOO is obviously targeting the online market and taking on the likes of OnePlus, but if it wants to be the next OnePlus, the specs just won't be enough. iQOO has to work on the software experience on its phones because that's the biggest problem. And if you're interested in the iQOO Z3 for 5G, first up, like I said recently, I'll say it again, 5G in India right now is a big gimmick. And there's also the fact that the iQOO Z3 only has two 5G bands, N77 and N78. Lastly, if you're wondering which phone should you buy instead of the iQOO Z3 5G, well, there are quite a few options. There's the Poco X3 Pro for the high-end performance, the Redmi Note 10 Pro Max for the 120Hz AMOLED premium design and better cameras, and you can also take a look at the motor phones for, you know, the cleaner software experience. Anyway, I want to know what you guys think of the iQOO Z3 5G. Tell us in the comment section below. Also, give this video a like, make sure to share it, and subscribe to our channel for more amazing tech videos. But that's me signing off. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.